Thank you, Molly. And I'm so, so excited today to present my next guest, my friend <laughs> from Australia, Sharon. Sharon is an, an Australian content creator, entrepreneur, and consultant who work with the best and brightness business owners to create a motivate profit from digital assets. As the founder of Onliners, Miss John was the first person in the world to publish a book to a mobile device and the first Australian woman to make more than a million dollars in online sales. Her book, Never Pay Bill, was an Amazon number one seller, best a bestseller, her app was downloaded from the app store in more than 70 countries and her Bible hack podcast is rapidly gaining in popularity among kingdoms entrepreneurs who want to boost their business God's way. Welcome, Shari. It's a pleasure to have you. You cannot imagine. Thank you, Katie. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's almost, it's like 2.30 in the morning here and it's winter, so it's probably the opposite of what you guys are experiencing right now. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> so good. So you, you're you going to teach us how to go global in six days? I was like, what? Go ahead. Right. It's yours. Okay. So just put in the chat if you would like to create international income and you would like to do that within the next week. Just put it, yes. Okay, Katie, I see yes. Sure, from Kimberly, this is awesome. Uh, let's let's set the chat on fire. Absolutely, from Molly. All good. Okay, I want to talk to you about. Does anyone know what the first verse in the Bible is? Like, you don't have to be a whole scholar, a theologian, or anything. But has anyone heard the first verse of the Bible? Was it in the beginning? I'm trying to remember. Now. Yeah, exactly. In the beginning, God created the heavens and about 5% of the earth. Is that what it says? No. It says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Like in the beginning, he was global. So the God scale from the beginning is global. So I hear people say to me, oh, I'm just not ready to go global yet. Like it's never too early to go global. If you read the Bible and I encourage you to do it, it's a completely different look at the way people build their business than you mainly hear. So you'll probably hear about lead generation. You'll hear about um, converting those leads. You'll hear about pricing, you know, having high ticket offers, um, frequency, getting more monthly recurring revenue. That's kind of, you know, very uh, normal kind of business building advice. And all of that's great. But to go global, when I say that, most people think in terms of that. They're like, oh, how am I going to get global leads? Or they go into that kind of structure. But I want you to think about, you can just write in the chat, scale equals countries. Scale equals countries, okay? So if I said to you I've got a business and I have $6 in revenue, or if I said to you I've got a business and I've got six clients, how do you rate in your own mind the success of that business versus someone who says I've got clients in six countries? Which one sounds to you like it's more of a thriving business? The six dollars, the six clients, or the six countries, right? Instinctively, we know, oh, doing business in six countries, it sounds like a bigger, more impressive, more successful business than someone who's doing six dollars or has six clients. And yet, when we think about going global, most of us are so stuck in that revenue kind of model or the client kind of model that we don't think about how am I going to get a new country today? So that's what I want to talk to you about. Um, most of the global brands that we know 
um, are global because they had an intention to go into a new country. They knew that they weren't going to stay local. And most of valuable businesses in the world today are what kind of businesses? Are they local businesses or are they global businesses? They're global, right? And so that's why we want to do it because going global creates a value. That's how value is created. Um, so we can think globally, we can make global decisions, we can use global tools like LinkedIn that Molly's just trained us so well in. So getting that global kind of mindset isn't just about the old way of thinking about business. It's like how can I always be thinking global and it's never too early and you're never too small to do that. So most of the complexity with any first sale in a new country or any sale in a country is that first sale, right? So you might want to put in the chat, when you think about how, how am I going to go into a new country, what are some of the kind of decisions that you might have to make? What are some of the barriers that you think might be holding you back? So it might be like, what time zone am I going to operate in? Am I going to do it at three in the morning? Am I going to do it in my time zone or what's better for their time zone? It might be what currency. Like, am I going to work in US dollars or am I going to work in their local currency? What other sort of, yeah, language. That's great, Katie. Yeah, of course. Like, are you going to communicate only in English or are you going to Google Translate or use AI tools? Or, or you leverage the language that you already have to speak in a local language. Yeah, conversions, taxes, right? Like is there um, a tax that I'll have to pay if I'm exporting to that country? Is there a licence in that country that I'll have to get? So there's all these kind of questions and decisions that we have to make. And, you know, sometimes it's even... What's the availability of online in that country? What's the speed of their internet connections? What's the cost of their internet connections? So all of these decisions can sound like quite complex and can kind of make me think, oh, I don't even know where to start. How do I do that? But the thing is, once you've solved them for the first sale, how hard is it to get the second sale in that country? Do you have to go through all of those decisions and angst and researching and problem solving again? Or do you only do it once and once you've got that first one, it's actually really easy to get the second and the third and the fourth sale, right? Okay, so what we tend to do is we get the first sale in the first country and then we're like, okay, I'm going to scale the old way again. So I go back to I'm going to get the second sale, I'm going to get lead gen here and all of that, instead of going, oh, I'm going to go to another country now, right? So now I've got two countries, three countries, four countries, because once you've solved that first one, it's almost organic, like it almost like Molly was talking about in Costco, the product sells itself. Once you have that first one down, you actually change who you are because now you've got the confidence that I know how to operate in that country. I've solved all of those problems in those countries. And also you have a client in that country who is spreading the good news about you, right? Because now they know they're telling their friends in that country, they're telling their colleagues or their um, partners or, or business partners in that country. So it starts to create connections as well and that kind of momentum sort of happens almost organically whereas going to another country is a bit hard because you've got to solve all those kind of questions again. So um, one of the things that we want to do if we're going to go to a new country is we're going to try and make our product as simple as possible and we're basically going to try and make everything else as simple as possible because we're going to have this inherent complexity, right? So if you're thinking about, oh, how do I price it and all that, I want you to try and think as simple as possible. Don't try and think of 
as profitable as possible. Don't try and think about how much revenue can I make or the volume or the distribution or all of those things. Just try and keep it as simple as possible for your first sale because you know that other things are going to be, when you look at it for the first time, a bit more complex. So then do it um, for a, a new country and a new country. The result is always a new country. Okay, the result is always the number of countries. So I love how Molly said when we're prospecting on LinkedIn, the result that we're looking for is for them to book a call. It's not for the sale, okay? I love people who are result-minded because our clients are all result-minded, right? That's all they care about. If I asked you, you know, what do your clients care about, you could give me a whole list of the features of your products or the way that you're different. or But they don't care about that. They only care about the result. Like if I was cooking chocolate chip cookies right now and I said to you, these are really unique, this is a recipe that no one else uses and all that, like you might be interested but you don't really care. What you care about is when can I taste that chocolate chip cookie because they want the result of that, right? And it's the same with your clients. I only want the result. So with going global, the result that we're looking for is a new country each time. Now, we're also talking about scaling, not just in terms of new countries, but scaling in a recession. And so I just want to hit on that for a second, because what is a recession? A recession is when, like, the majority of people locally are experiencing a shrinking economy, right? The GDP growth, technical definition of a recession. But in any recession, there's always some people who are doing well, right? It's the same like when there's people on one side of the world that are in sunshine, there's people on the other side of the world that are in darkness. When there's people in summer, there's people on the other side of the world that are in winter. And it's the same in any recession. There's always people that are doing well. Like even in war-torn countries where you can literally see the destruction of, you know, some assets like real estate assets or whatever, there's other people who are thriving, like people who are supplying things for the war effort or people who are supporting refugees or transportation of people, right? There's always someone who's thriving. So I don't want you to think about going global in terms of, oh, I can only do this when that country's doing well or I only want to do business with this country because they're doing well. It doesn't really matter whether it's a recession in that country or in your country. It matters how many countries you're in because your ability to make income in extra countries is what's going to give you that result. Now, um, on... On the free giveaway that I'm going to give to you, I've got like a six-day plan for you to go global and I've kept it as simple as possible to make sure that you take action every day for six days. And when I say take action, how long do you think I want you to spend on going global on your business each day for the next six days? Put it in the chat. What do you reckon? A little bit of time. How much time do you think it's worth to spend if you've got, like, international income in multiple countries at the end of the week? 30 minutes a day, Molly. Wow, that's cool. 25, Katie. It's going down. <laughs> Good, because I only want you to spend six minutes a day to go global in the next six days. And, in fact, some of them you could spend more than six minutes, but you really don't have to. So especially step, I won't tell you what they are because I want you to go and grab it for yourself, but steps two and four, you could get quite creative and spend more than six minutes if you want. And step six, you can repeat often for years to come. So <laughs> you, you can obviously spend more than six minutes on that one. But the other ones, one, three and five, you shouldn't, shouldn't take you any more than six minutes to do because it's not about doing things that are hard or that take a long time. It's just about getting the result. 
and you only want to have a very simple product and a very simple offer. And so basically I want you to start thinking about who are the people that I know that are in different countries. Now I want you to put in the chat just from today's event, how many different countries have you heard speakers from today? Three, three, four. Yeah, so we've had, we've definitely had the USA, we've had Germany, we've had Australia. Who else have we had? Like what other country? UK, right, okay. So it's coming up, is it? Did I miss that or is that coming up? Coming up, right, okay. So four country, even if all you did was contact the speakers from this event and give them like an offer, an irresistible offer for like $1. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be complex. Just, just a digital asset maybe for $1. You could be in four different countries by the end of this week, right? And, again, as I said, once those people start to get to know you, they'll be telling their friends, their colleagues, their connections in all of those countries. So it doesn't have to be huge. I don't want to have any barriers to stop you from doing it. The most important thing is to start. And like I said, in the beginning, go global. Even if you're just starting your business today or even if it's just a hobby at this stage and you haven't even started a business, start today. Uh, you know, you don't have to be a multiple six or seven or eight figure, nine figures <laughs> entrepreneur to start this. Start going global because it changes who you are and how you approach your business and the tools that you use and the experience you'll get. You'll be really amazed. So I'm going to just pop in the chat, if I can, uh, just a link for you to go and download that six-day plan to go global, and I would love you all to do that. It's free, obligation-free. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to do anything, but I would love you to connect and do that. And actually, I might even put in a link from, I interviewed Katie like, I know it was a couple of years ago now, Katie. I think it was, and it was a great interview. So I'm going to yeah. give a shout-out to Katie. <laughs> And put in yes, put in the link to that if if anyone likes podcasts. Yeah, I love listening to podcasts when I'm out on my walks and things. Or yeah, so you can listen to Katie and I having a chat too. Yeah. <laughs> Cheryl, is there anything you would like to add to this interview that we most know or any motivation, anything that? Just go global. Like I I remember I had um, when I like 1996. So like almost 30 years ago, 28 years ago, I had a client who wanted a result from me and I had to charge what my business partner at the time, I had a marketing partner who got all my leads for me. They set the pricing. I had to charge what they made me. And it was going to be $10,000 work for less than a day's, $10,000 cost for less than a day's work and I was only in my 20s and I knew that I was not worth $10,000. No 20-year-old was worth $10,000. Um, and so I was really angry that this person was prepared to pay that. I was like, that's a waste of money. And I was really angry that my marketing partner wanted me to charge that because I said, you know, surely we can charge them a lower price because it's less than a day's work, like, because they want me to do it overnight. Like, no, in fact, if they want it sooner, they should be paying more. And I was like, why isn't anyone listening to me? I'm going to be doing the work. I'm the expert here. Why is no one listening to me? And then I did the work and I got the check in my hand and I wasn't angry anymore. I was, like, very happy that I was like, oh, if I can do $10,000 in one day, today why can't I do that every day exactly. like it just changed who I was and what I could do in business and the possibilities that I saw for my business and the same thing happened when I went global I was like when I got that first international client I was just like oh my goodness 
yeah, I can I can deliver a result to a client without them being in the same country as me. It doesn't matter where they are. It only matters if I can get them the result. So I just encourage you to do it now. Go global. You won't look back, I promise you. Thank you, Sharon. I want to say this has been an amazing event. I would like to honor two of my two friends, business friends here and my friends, um, Kim Robinson and Mariami. I would like to come quickly and say who you serve before we, we leave this meeting, please. Kim, Mariami. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll hop on right quick and just say what I have to say. Yeah, so I am a transformational coach. I work with people who really need to reset their thoughts on what they're doing with their lives. And my focus is really on just people in general that maybe feel like they can't get to the next direct direction. So I help them with their confidence. I mean, I'm also a personal trainer, so I help them a little bit with fitness and nutrition and all that as well, if they need it. And I just love, I just love people and I love working with clients. So that's what I do. And I'm, now I'm looking at doing some global action. So I'm very excited <laughs> about all these great things I'm hearing. And also, I'm very much looking at doing LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Molly. Because yes. I think I've been se selling myself too short. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Again. Um, Mariame? Okay. I'm here. Hello. I'm with uh, children. So that's why I've been hiding a bit. Lovely to be here. Thank you all for sharing all these insights and information. Really appreciate it. I work with um, moms with special needs children as a self-care empowerment coach to empower them with uh, self-care and to dedicate time for themselves to be the best mother they can be. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to see you guys here. I mean, everybody here. So thank you so much, Mariami and Ken, Sarah, Molly, <laughs> Judith, Katie, everybody. So it, was, it has been an amazing event. I've learned so much for each one of you. Molly has been, I have to watch it replay, all of you <laughs> and Sarah. Thank you so much for being in this event called Scalar Resection. I hope to see you next time for this more to come. Thank you so much for being with us today and that's very much <laughs> the end of the event. And, you know, I want to say thank you and go and change the world. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. Yes. Well, thank you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I don't take more of your time. Thank you for your time. Molly again, Tara again. Thank you for being. It means a lot for me, or for all of you to be here. Okay. Thank you. Right. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. We'll connect on Facebook. Bye.